Krakova, a medieval city. The landscape on the Bria Plateau is dominated by the imposing silver dome of the St. Kyrias Collegiate Church and the pencil-like tip of Caesar's Tower. Then, very quickly, the whole of the upper town comes into view, a skyline of fortifications that appears quite unchanged since the Middle Ages. As you pass the Saint-Jean Gate, close your eyes. You can already hear the portcullis, the voices from the guardroom. The archers, while in this year of 1241, up on the ramparts, the local people, the Provinois, hail the homecoming crusader, his lordship Thibaut IV, Count of Champagne. Everything here takes you back to the Middle Ages, a time of great prosperity for Provins. In the 12th and 13th centuries, better farming equipment and a period of political stability enabled an economic and social revival in which Provins played a key role. It is no surprise then, as you step into the tithe barn, La Grange aux Dimes, to find the Italian spice merchant, the money changer with his weights and coins, the public letter writer, or the draper selling local Provins cloth. We have gone back 700 years to a time when the local fairs made Champagne the biggest socio-economic center in Europe. People converged from Flanders, Navarre, Anjou, Provence, England and Italy. Merchants rented townhouses to store, sell and exchange their merchandise, often brought back from realms way beyond the boundaries of the Kingdom of France. Down in the lower town, the presence of two small rivers, the Voulzy and the Durtin, helped to give Provins the name Little Venice, and are still today reminders of the marshland that used to surround the city. It sounds as though something is going on behind the tower of Notre Dame du Val. The hustle and bustle of preparations for the Saint Ayoul Fair. It is a cold, dry day sometime in September or October 1253. You can smell the cloves being offered to you by the grocer. Try on the leather brodkins that have just been sewn together by the cobbler and listen to the weaver praising the qualities of the famous Provin Nair, a thick cloth used to make blankets and capes. At the foot of the Rue Saint-Thibault, in the former palace of the Countesses of Champagne, now the Hôtel Dieu, is the entrance to an unsuspected world. This immense network of underground galleries was probably dug between the 12th and 14th centuries to extract the fuller's earth needed to manufacture the local cloth. In the street, Knights cross your path and salute you as a matter of course. They are preparing for this afternoon's jousting at the foot of the ramparts, close to the Porso Tower. Time really did stand still here between 975 and 1285 AD, before the Counts of blois vermandois and then the Counts of Champagne took Provins to its apogee a proud city defying the power of the neighboring kingdom of France. Rue Saint-Thibault leads you up to the Place du Châtel. In the Middle Ages, some 100 wells supply drinking water to the upper town. The Edict Cross takes its name from an old custom whereby the people of Provins assembled here for the reading of the latest edicts issued by the counts and kings. Take a seat on the stone bench. Just listen to the money changers who made the city so wealthy. Under Thibaut IV, Provins, a city of fairs, had a population of nearly 10,000. 
minted its own coins, the famous Provins Denier, and was France's fifth ranking city. Provins was at the crossroads of more than 11 commercial routes, and no fewer than 3,000 craftsmen showcased their know how, each guild being concentrated in its own part of the town. In the streets of the upper town, you will soon realize that Pova is nothing less than a living exhibition of civilian, military and religious medieval architecture. In honor of the counts, start with the Caesar's Tower, edified in the 12th century at the behest of Henry the Liberal, Count of Champagne, at the time, one of the most powerful and erudite figures in France. Home of the Lords of Provins, the Count's Palace still retains its 12th and 13th century wings and a chapel, all of which now lie in the grounds of the Thibault de Champagne High School. Now, what's going on at the saint Kyrias Collegiate Church? Could it be a group of wandering minstrels and other musicians trying to capture some damsel's heart? In reality, the austere façade and the impressive 17th century cupola belie the architectural finesse of the interior with its subtle combination of Norman and Gothic art. A day in Provins is scarcely enough to discover all the city's hidden treasures. Take the time to look around at the multitude of wonderfully preserved medieval houses, their facades with Gothic windows, vaulted rooms, remarkable chapters, provad tiles, kitchens and fireplaces awaiting you at each street corner and at the entrance to each square. Up on the covered ramparts, archers are on patrol. Higher still, in the blue sky, a majestic eagle is wheeling. A reminder that back in the Middle Ages, falconry was one of the favorite pastimes of the ruling classes. Each year, from April to October, Provins honors the tradition with the opportunity to see birds of prey in free flight. From the Jouy gate comes the sound of hooves. Here comes the knight with the rose. He had been entrusted by Thibaut IV to bring back a damas rose from the Crusades. Today, Rosa Gallica Officinalis, with its recognized medicinal virtues, is part of the cultural and gastronomic heritage of Provins, and its fragrance still hangs in many of the city's gardens. So quite how did a medieval heritage on this scale survive till the present day? At the start of the 14th century, the lands of Brie and Champagne became part of the Kingdom of France. The map of the main trading routes changed, and subsequently, the Hundred Years' War, the Black Death, and the gradual shift of trade away from the fairs all caused the proud city to decline. For the next 600 years, Provins was to become a small, isolated rural town bypassed by history and the development of large urban centers. Thus forgotten, Pova was miraculously spared, and since 2001, the outstandingly conserved medieval city has been listed by UNESCO as a World Heritage Site.